Well, as today is Holocaust Memorial Day in Israel, we are truly honored to be welcoming two special guests to the studio to tell us more about the importance of Never Again. Lucy Lippiner, an author and Holocaust survivor, and Rena Katz, her daughter, and also the author of Life Inherited, Unraveling the Trauma of a Second Generation Holocaust Survivor. Lucy Lippiner was born in Poland, where she survived the horrors of the Holocaust at only age six. She came to the United States at age 16 in 1949, and that 10-year journey to freedom took her through harrowing conditions in Siberia and Tajikistan, losing 17 family members on the way, before finally making it to America, where she built a life for herself, including having a daughter, Rina. Last year, she made Aliyah at, to Israel at age 90, and she is not stopping. Lately, Lucy has become a bit of a star on social media, fighting back against modern anti-Semitism. Rina, Lucy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for Pleasure. having us. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to start with you, Lucy. I, I, I would love to hear from you. What, what do you think this generation now needs to know about what you survived as a child? I would like this generation to know exactly what happened to our people. Because how else do you learn if you don't learn from history? This is very, very important, I feel. Now, when it comes to how you were ultimately able to survive, what, what did you do? What, what were you thinking in, the, in those moments as a, as a child? I mean, obviously, you were very young. Did you grasp what was happening? Uh, I was lucky to be born to the parents that I had because uh, my father uh, understood what Hitler's fascism meant, that to him it meant a certain death for the Jewish people. So as a child, uh, I just knew that we needed to leave our home, our business, our property, leave our lives and run away. Because there was no other choice. Yes, you could hide, but there were always neighbors who would give you away. So my dad felt that the only option left for us is to run away. And that is how we survived. My dad is responsible for saving 15 lives, 15 people's li lives. And as a result, we are now about 120 people who owe their lives to my dad. That's beautiful. Always uh, stories of heroism in the midst of immense, immense tragedy. Yeah. When it comes to the, the anti-Semitism that, that you experienced around that time as a child, how would you say that it compares to what, what we're seeing today with this resurgence? I mean, you're very active also on social it's, media. It's very scary because it feels like 1930s again. But for, I was a very frightened child. I experienced fear almost daily. But now I am no longer afraid because we are no longer powerless. Now in Israel, gives me and everyone, every Jewish person in this world feels more secure. We have a country that is no longer powerless. We are powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even in difficult days, I think we know that this is true. Yes. 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 Rina, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, about second generational trauma. You actually wrote a book on this. What was it like for you? How did it impact your, your childhood and growing up being a second generation survivor? Um, I think it was the, it, it created the backbone of my whole, um, my whole youth, my adulthood. It was my everything. As soon as I learned, and I learned as a very young child, I remember my mom and I watching the Eichmann trial when I was six years old, and I knew exactly what um, he was on trial for. And I kept his image in my head for years, and then I'd see pictures, and I knew it was totally correct, the way I'd envisioned him. And I knew that it was a miracle that I was alive, that I shouldn't have been alive. And I think that there was a foundation for me of guilt and fear 
And because of that, I tamped down happiness mm -hmm. and pleasure because I was lucky enough to be alive. I'd been born. Right. So I really Colors couldn't. The whole, the whole worldview. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, we are running out of time, but I did want to ask both of you, in regards to the future, what is your hope for, for dealing with the anti-Semitism that we face today? I'll start with you, Rena. Um, I don't feel very optimistic. Anti-Semitism has been around as long as uh, the Jewish people have. And I think whatever the worst thing there is in the world to people is what we ultimately get accused of. So again, I agree with my mom that we have Israel. And unfortunately, people don't want to see us as a moral people and a moral army. But what can we do? We, so we should stop yeah. needing to be liked. Yep. Lucy? Uh, my own feelings about anti-Semitism, it's a virus. Mm -hmm. And can we cure it? I don't know. Uh, we have to, um, I think educating people would be one way, one option of trying to reduce this awful uh, anti-Semitism. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank, Thank you, you, Rena. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.